All right, so when we initially set up our what can we keep track of for an object between two points in time, we said that there were four vector things that we could keep track of. The change in position, the average velocity, the change in velocity, the average acceleration. But there was also one additional thing that we could keep track of, and that was the average speed. And we said that fundamentally the average speed is literally just what's the distance the object traveled divided by the time that that interval of time between the initial and final points. So with the average speed, that's just distance over time. So the first thing to, to make sure is really clear is this is not a vector problem. This is a scalar problem. I simply need to know the distance the object traveled, the time it took to travel that, and do the calculation. So. I could have had an object that went straight there, or I could have had an object that took a very different route. So the, the trade-off here is, unlike my vector problems, where I don't have to worry about any of the details between my initial point in time and my final point in time, to calculate the average speed, I do actually have to know what's gone on between those two points in time. So sort of the trade-off that we're making here is because it's not a vector problem, it's a scalar problem, mathematically it's just much easier. But I have to have more information, right? I have to have in some way kept track of exactly where it went because the average speed cares about the path the object takes from the final point to the initial point. So if, if I have sort of two scenarios, the two scenarios that are shown here, where if the object took the blue path, because that's much shorter, as opposed to the green path, it would have had to travel much faster along the green path to have covered that much more distance in the same amount of time. So I know that the average speed is going to be much greater along the green path than it would be along the blue. And so that's the idea. That's the trade-off that we're making. Simpler math because of the scalar nature of the average speed, but I need more information. So there are situations where the average speed and the average velocity and the magnitude of the average velocity are the same. And you notice that this is one of those things where we're using this, and oftentimes this might mean the magnitude of the average velocity, but with the average velocity, we're going to be very particular, and when we want its magnitude, we're always going to put it in the absolute value symbol, because this doesn't have to be the same as the magnitude of the average velocity. In fact, they're only the same in the special case where the object walked in a straight line from its initial point to its final point. So again, if it walked this way, and it could have stopped somewhere along there, but as long as it didn't turn around and start going back, then the average speed and the magnitude of the average velocity are going to be the same. But if the object turned at all, whether it was turned around or turned and walked in a different direction, then those two things are not going to be the same. So again, here, what you would calculate for the magnitude of the average velocity is going to be different from the average speed, simply because the, av the magnitude of the average velocity is not going to take into account all this additional distance that the object walked in going from its initial position to its final position. So if the object changes direction at all as it moves from its initial point to its final point, so turns left, turns right, turns around, any of those, then those two quantities, the average speed and the magnitude of the average velocity, are not going to be 